Hello, fans. I'm Bob Finnegan. Welcome to this edition of Big Time Wrestling. We have some excitement on today's show for you, so don't go away. As Big Time Wrestling travels around the country to bring you only the best, the top from the world of professional wrestling. And a little bit later on in this program, we're going to have word how you clubs, groups, charities, and organizations out there can raise valuable money for your treasuries. But right now, let's talk about who's going to be on this television program. First of all, we're going to take you to the Lone Star State of Texas, where we will see the former world heavyweight champion, Dory Funk Jr. in an exciting bout. That's our opening bout here on Big Time Wrestling today. Then we're going to go to Indianapolis, Indiana for one of the world's most exciting wrestlers, a man who can have anything happen. He can make it happen inside this squared circle anytime he appears. That's the wild man from Syria, the fireman of pro wrestling, the chic as he takes on the great sailor Art Thomas. That's not all. Then you're going to see Big Ox Baker in a bout against Blackie Guzman. You're going to see an exciting six-man tag team battle. Listen to some of the stars in this one. You're going to see Bulldog Don Kent, the magnificent Zulu, and Big Ed Davis against the combination of Captain Ed George, Luis Martinez, and World Junior Heavyweight Champion Nelson Royal. Then... We go to Cobo Arena in Detroit to see Cowboy Frankie Lane test the strong man of professional wrestling, Oscar the Crusher Verdue. An exciting bout there. And then to top it all off, you're going to see the world's most dangerous wrestler, Dick the Bruiser. Now, what more could you ask for? Excitement from beginning to end. And on this television program, again, we'll be telling you how you clubs, groups, charities, and organizations out there can raise valuable money for your treasuries. So stay tuned from beginning to end for today's edition of Big Time Wrestling, the superstars of pro wrestling appearing right here in this next hour so don't go away fans in fact coming up first is that bout from texas with dory funk jr ladies and gentlemen the nwa the national wrestling alliance and worldwide sports presents america's number one spectator sport big time wrestling Fall has a 10 minute time limit in the red corner from Amarillo, Texas, coming in at 247 pounds, former world's heavyweight champion, Dory Funk Jr. Well, his opponent in the blue corner from Lakewood, Ohio, coming in at 229 pounds, Denny Alberts. There's the bell. This match starts. Corey Funk Jr. pulls Denny Alberts into the side of the next to him, puts it in there and brings him down. Now Dory Funk Jr. still has to be ranked the number one contender in professional wrestling for the world's heavyweight championship held by Harley Race. You know, there were only two Texans to ever hold the world's heavyweight championship. That was Dory Funk Jr. and, of course, Terry Funk. And they both lost that belt to the same man. That's Harley Race, who holds it now. They're backed into the corner. Dory Funk Jr. had to hold, but he was in behind, so he had to break, and Alberts comes backing out of there. They lock up in the referee's position. An arm drag puts Dory Funk Jr. down on the mat as Denny Albert out of Lakewood, Ohio. Would like to impress the friends around the world with a victory here over Dory Funk Jr., but boy, does he have his work cut out for him. Dory Funk Jr. has to be the smartest man in professional wrestling. Anytime you can hold the world's heavyweight championship for four and a half years, defend it well over a thousand times, there's no doubt about that. Boom, down goes Alberts. You can see why Dory Funk Jr. is so smart. He thinks ahead, just as Alberts had the controlling hold there. Dory Funk Jr. came up with one to get rid of him. Eyes for the leg, it wasn't there as Alberts pulled it out of the way. Kenny Alberts on Dory Funk Jr. Dory Funk Jr. drops down, rolls him up, had the shoulders down for a count of one. And Denny Alberts, thinking that he was controlling the match, just about found himself defeated there as Dory Funk Jr. had those shoulders down. Two minutes gone in a match. Dory Funk Jr. picking up the leg. Knee across his knee, and Denny Alberts will be feeling the pain now. 
Corey Bozier reaches down. Uppercuts him with that very, very vicious uppercut that he possesses. Head scissors. Albert's in it. Danny Albert's trying to kick out. He can't go anywhere. Dory Coe Jr. has it locked on tight. Dory Coe Jr. Albert comes out of it, dies to the head of Dory Coe Jr. You know, I kind of feel like Terry does. The last time we talked to Terry, he said there's no doubt in his mind that when Dory Funk Jr. steps into the ring against Harley Race, that Dory Funk Jr. will regain the world's championship for the Funk family in the great state of Texas. Backed onto the ropes. Dory Funk Jr. pulls him out. Arm is carrying. Down goes Albert. Dory goes to the arm bar. Oh, up and got into that arm by Dory Funk Jr. as Albert is wondering what's going on. Four minutes going in the match. You can see Dory Funk Jr. pulling that arm up and up. Now he steps over. Drops him up an arm drag, brings Alberts with him. Alberts will not concede as the referee Ken Farmer asked him, did he want to give the fall and the match to Dory Jr. And he said no. There's the arm bar with a twist. Uh-oh. Oh, he took him down with that leg lock. Goes on top. Just a two count, that's all. What about Junior has him up? Ooh, I thought he was going to suplex him way up, but Albert's got in front of him and changed the leverage. This time he got him. Bouncing off the ropes. Elbow smash. On top. Maybe all over. There's the two count and the three. And in the time of five minutes even. Dory Funk Jr. keeping himself in great physical condition. You! 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 Come on! Come on! You! You! Hey! Hey! She! She! You made what you've been thinking! Come on! Well, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't even got the match started and the Sheik makes this vicious attack on Sailor Art Thomas, biting him. The referee's trying to get Eddie Creechman out of the ring. Uh, there's the bell. We're officially underway now. The Sheik carrying away at Eddie Creechman. Oh, Eddie Creechman handed some object, something is in the hand of the Sheik. And the Sheik is right after Art Thomas and drives that object, whatever it is, some sort of a rod, a piece of metal, into the throat of Sailor Art Thomas. Now this Sheik is absolutely going wild in there. Eddie Creechman on the outside is running around yelling instruction. The Sheik has Thomas again, and oh, he drives that object right into the throat of Sailor R. Thomas. And the great Sailor R. Thomas has been unable to do a thing because he was completely overwhelmed by the Sheik. Right at the very start. Creechman is up there on the apron. Some of the fans trying to stop Creechman. But look at the Sheik is in that ring. Art Thomas has been hurt. The Sheik going right after him, working on his throat. Again, he drives it right into the throat of Sailor Art Thomas. Man, I mean, this Sheik is a wild man. There's 
is Eddie Creechman again, the manager, up on the apron. He's arguing with the referee. The Sheik hits Thomas again in the throat. The Sheik very cleverly keeps that hidden from the referee, and Creechman keeps diverting the attention of the referee. Again, the Sheik. Look at that wild look on the Sheik, that maniacal look. Look at those eyes. Oh, man. Look at this Sheik. He's a wild man. He has an almost inhuman expression on his face. And a sailor, Art Thomas, who's such a top-notch wrestler, has been unable to do a thing. Oh, again, the Sheik has driven that right into the throat. Boy, that Creechman is going wild. And so is the Sheik. And so are the fans. The fans are absolutely going wild. Pandemonium raining. Again, the Sheik hits him in the throat. Or whatever he has in his hand. I don't know what it is. Who about you, D? Who are you? Fans. This Sheik is just as wild as can be. I don't know how we're going to get get this match on the way as a match because the Sheik took off on Sailor Rod Thomas. The referee is continuously, continuously harassed by Eddie Creechman. The Sheik has something. The Sheik keeps working on Thomas and Thomas is hurt and he's hurt bad. Sheik hits him, drops him, the Sheik back, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, the Sheik has got that fire, oh, he, somehow or other, I don't know what it is, he got, he put some fire right into the face of Sailor, Ah, <laughs> Thomas, he's burned him badly. Listen, Creechman. That isn't a wrestling victory. First from Puerto Rico, weighing 225 pounds, Blackie Guzman. And his opponent from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing 303 pounds, Big Ox Baker. <laughs> Ox Baker is the man of the hour. You heard Ox Baker get a lot of cheers from the fans. Uh, Ox is in pretty much the same boat as we're due in that respect anyway. You know, the people are all cheering for the Ox. They're all behind him because Ox is their man. He is the man that people are looking for to destroy the United States heavyweight champion, the Sheik. Ox is on a vendetta against the Sheik. He's after him. And he is just biding his time, keeping his cool, trying to keep his cool anyway, saving it all up for the next time he enters the ring against the U.S. heavyweight champion, the Sheik. Big Ox Baker. Boy, this guy is, he is plenty mean and plenty vicious. Loves to be hated. He claims the fans just love to hate him. He doesn't like it when the people cheer for him. He wants to hear boos. That gets him going. He loves to hear boos. Very strange attitude. Nonetheless, that's the way Ox Baker feels. He says he'll love to hate me. Blackie Guzman, new face on Big Time Wrestling. He's got the task trying to defeat the big man from St. Louis, Ox Baker. Right around six feet six inches tall, maybe a little more. 
303 pounds. The axe is in shape, too. Applying a nerve grip to Blackie Guzman, and you can be assured that any hold that Axe Baker applies, his opponent is going to feel. Maybe more so than a lot of other wrestlers because of the immense power behind Ox Baker. Ox Baker is a very, very highly respected, very highly rated wrestler also. Been coming into his own for the last year or so, but traveling extensively, meeting all the top challengers, making his way to the top of the ratings, making his way to the very top, the championship. Now he's just about there. Just waiting for his opportunity to meet the shoot. First, though, he's got to get by this man, Blackie Guzman. This is the man that the Ox is concentrating on now, though I'm sure that the Sheik probably has got a, and it has had an effect on Ox Baker. The Sheik is probably on his mind. The Sheik does that to people. Despite yourself, you find yourself thinking about him, wondering what he's going to come up with, wondering what that man is going to do next. But of course, Ox is, as I get to think about it, sort of like the same type of a guy. Ox's opponents, Ox Baker's opponents, must feel much the same way as the Sheik's opponents. Gee, what is this guy going to do to me next? Whatever it is, you can be assured you probably won't like it. Blackie Guzman with a forearm on the Ox. Has no effect on him, though. Ox with one of his own. But Guzman took him off his feet, put him on his knees. The Ox once again moving in with that nerve grip. Big Ox Baker with Guzman stretched over the top rope. Down with that elbow smash across the back of the neck of Guzman. Ox Baker, the man who uses as his submission maneuver that deadly heart punch. When I say deadly, I mean it because three times in the past, three wrestlers have met an unfortunate end thanks to Ox Baker's heart punch. A man by the name of Enrique Therese comes to mind as one who succumbed to that heart punch in the ring. The heart punch is just that, that punch thrown directly into the heart. Ox Baker has got it all mapped out, though, knows exactly the position exactly the spot, the exact spot to throw that punch in. And besides that, he's got his fists taped. So he throws that taped fist into that exact spot on his man's heart. And 100% of the time, that results in a win. You just saw the heart punch. You just saw it. And that's what happens. Whenever Ox Baker throws that heart punch on a man, the man goes down and the count goes in and Ox Baker's hand is raised. So Ox Baker, the victor, once again on Big Time Wrestling with the use of that heart punch. Back with more Big Time Wrestling action, ladies and gentlemen, after this timeout. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the ring, get our six-man tag team bout underway. And introducing, ladies and gentlemen, first from Monterey, Mexico, weighing 234 pounds, Arriba Luis Martinez. And from Mooresville, North Carolina, weighing 229 pounds, the world's junior heavyweight champion, Nelson Royal. And from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 242 pounds, the WWS heavyweight champion, Captain Ed George. Their opponents first from Los Angeles, California, weighing 246 pounds, Johnny Davis. And from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 298 pounds, the magnificent Zulu. And from Indianapolis, Indiana, weighing 243 pounds, Bulldog Don Kent. And my apologies, because in all that, uh, with all those people to introduce, I forgot to introduce George Cannon, the manager of Ed George, Louis Martinez, Nelson Royal. Well, actually, more precisely, just the manager of Captain Ed George, though I'm sure he'll have some advice for the other members of this tag team combination okay a six-man tag 
I tell you what, it's not very often that we see a six-man tag in an arena, much less on television. A lot of people looking forward to seeing this happen today on Big Time Wrestling. My thanks, and I'm sure yours go also to the promoter for signing this six-man tag team bout. Always something up his sleeve to keep us on our toes. Well, Nelson Royal wanted a little piece of uh, Bulldog Don Kent, and uh, finally Davis tagged off to the Bulldog. Kent and Royal lock up in the referee hole. People coming alive. On the move, down goes Nelson Royal a second time. Here goes Kent again. This time, though, he's caught with an arm drag, hip toss, takedown. <coughs> All in one. Now John Davis, a little bit of a bigger guy, going to come in, and he is going to see what he can do with Nelson Royal. Referee holds side, headlock into the corner, tag off to Luis Martinez. Luis in. He's got a hold of that headlock on Big John Davis. There goes Louis. Down goes Davis. Louis on the move again. Davis goes down a second time. And Louis right there with that side headlock. And now let's see what the captain can do. The captain in the ring. Captain Ed George, the people's choice. He is in the ring. And down goes John Davis. Side headlock taken by Captain Ed George. People cheering along at that side headlock. As Ed George goes to town on John Davis. Tag off to Nelson Royal. Punch. Nelson Royal going to do a little of that to John Davis. That's what causes the cauliflower ears. That is the move that's primarily responsible for creating those swollen ears, which are the trademark of many wrestlers. Uh-oh, in the enemy territory is Luis Martinez. He's got Kent working on him. Davis, meanwhile, tags off behind him to Magnificent Zulu. Haven't seen Zulu for quite some time. Zulu, the proud possessor. There's a headbutt from Zulu. Doesn't put Louis down, though. There's the bear hug from Zulu. And in comes Ed George and Nelson Royal. They break this up nice and quick. Zulu, the proud possessor of one of the most fantastic physiques in pro wrestling. Zulu, we understand, is very much improved since last we saw him. We'll have to watch and find out. He's got Ed George in the bear hug now. Nelson Royal and Louie are in, though. They break it up. Boy, this action. I don't know how I'm going to keep on top of this. <laughs> it's hard enough sometimes with just two guys, but you got six. Nelson Royal in the ring with Magnificent Zulu. has got his side headlock on Zulu. Zulu picks him right up off his feet, though, and down it goes. Dropped right on his back. Nelson Royal with a look of amazement on his face. Doesn't quite believe that that happened to him. Royal and Zulu. Off the ropes goes Royal. He's caught with a bear hug. Zulu's quite adept at getting that bear hug on his opponents, isn't he? That's about the fourth or fifth time he's gotten that bear hug applied so far. That's a credit to Zulu because most wrestlers will try to avoid that at all costs. Louis Martinez going right behind the man. Takes him down off his feet. And Zulu, once off his feet, is pretty much helpless. Here comes Louie, though. Bounces right off of Zulu, down onto the canvas. Nelson Royal is tagged, and he comes. Into the corner they go. Kent is in now. Kent and Nelson Royal. These two have had quite a series of encounters. Various places around the country in the last uh, several weeks. Former tag team partners now on opposite sides of that ring. I'll have to tell you that story someday when we got a little more time. Down goes Nelson Royal over the top of Kent, though. Nice move from Nelson Royal up in the air with a flying head scissors, and over comes Bulldog Don Kent. George Cannon in the corner with a look of approval on his face. There's George Cannon keeping an eye on things. He's got a lot to keep an eye on. Well, then there's a lot of George Cannon to do that. George Cannon probably one of the top uh, two or three most successful managers in professional wrestling over the years. He has managed more champions or more championship ta uh, tag team combinations than any other manager has. Currently, 
Under his guidance is Captain Ed George. As a matter of fact, it was just a couple of weeks after George Cannon purchased the contract of Ed George that Ed George won that WWS championship at the conclusion of a hard fought tournament. Speaking of a lot of hard fighting, a lot of energy in this ring today, six top wrestlers. The magnificent Zulu, John Davis and Bulldog Don Kent against Nelson Royal, Ed George, and Luis Martinez. Davis in illegally, referee orders him out. What he did, though, was effective in that it uh, turned the tables and allowed Kent to gain the advantage on Nelson Royal. The referee urges John Davis to stay out of the ring, out of the action. The Bulldog drops Royal throat first across that top rope. Thank God that Royal was where he was and could tag out. That is a rough way to go. Throat first over that top rope. One of Don Kent's favorite moves. Bulldog just loves to use that particular move on an opponent and that should speak pretty well of the character of Bulldog Don Kent. And look at these two, Ed George and Bulldog Don Kent. Hey, those two names have been on a lot of main events lately. You can be sure that absolutely nothing has been settled between Ed George and Bulldog Don Kent also. Still a lot of hard feelings there. Luis Martinez outsmarts John Davis, puts him down with a well-placed punch right in there between the eyes. Nelson Royal gets ready, and Davis meets up with Nelson shoulder first. Nelson in now. After the tag from Luis Martinez, Davis throwing some hard fists into Nelson Royal. Caught him a nice one on the jaw there. Fists, of course, illegal. Knuckle portion, anyway. The side of the fist is legal. That is a distinction a lot of wrestlers, though, will go a long way to get around. They'll use that fist, and when the referee catches him, they'll say, oh, no, I just threw a, the side of the fist. You didn't see that, ref. <coughs> Drop kick from Nelson Royal. And boy, Davis went halfway across the ring, just about out onto the floor, into the laps of the people at ringside, which I'm sure... Ladies and gentlemen, while we've got some time in this bout, while you're watching all this great action, I want to take just a moment to talk to you about the thing that's on your screen right now. We're talking specifically to you members and secretaries of any groups, civic clubs, organizations. If any of you would like to bring big time wrestling to your city or community, raise those much needed funds for your club treasury, hey, big time wrestling is the way to do it. And if you want all the information, talk to the man who's done it for so many people in the past, the man who's raised so much money for so many different groups around the area. The man to talk to, to write to, whichever, is Mike Colonis. This is, there's the address and the phone number on your screen. You can write down that address and phone number. Give him a call, and you'll be on your way to a truly enjoyable evening when you bring big time wrestling to your town. Mike Colonis is the man who can get it done for you. And you can reach him by writing that address or calling that phone number. If you didn't get it today, you tune in next week. We'll have it for you once again. Back to the ring, though. Six-man tag team action in progress on Big Time Wrestling. John Davis against Captain Ed George. Davis with the side headlock. George got a hold of him, though. It looks like he's maybe trying to throw him off. Davis. Let's see. Uh-oh. Davis caught with a fist. And that punch of Ed George is the most devastating in professional wrestling. You don't have to take my word for that. Just ask uh, some people that he's wrestled, and they'll tell you. Well, we've got how many? Five in the ring. Don Kent on the outside. I can't sort them all out. We've got Zulu uh, making some time with his headbutts, though. Ed George is doing okay for himself. Yeah, it looks like your favorites sort of got the best of that particular little situation. Maybe the guys on your screen right now, in that corner anyway, 
that left hand corner will think twice before. Well, I guess they won't. We've got all we've got five of them in a give. Ken's still on the outside. He he knows when he's good off, I guess. Well off. He's gonna stay on the outside. <laughs> Plenty new expressions. Kent with uh, some fists on the outside to Nelson Royal. Ed George catches uh, Davis along with Lewis Martinez. Double fist from Davis. Boy, that knocked the you know what out of him. In the other corner, though, Nelson Royal's in a bad way. He's being double teamed by Bulldog Don Kent of the Magnificent Zulu. We've got four in there now. Davis has had enough. He's going to stay outside with Kent. That Kent is a he's a threat, though, in or out of the ring. Bulldog waited for his chance, though. He came in, caught Louis Martinez. Well, gee, we've got quite a, quite a thing going on in the ring. Now, all six men, Zulu forced to relinquish his bear hug on Nelson Royal. Louis Martinez got a hold of Kent now, trying to get him anyway. Referee, uh, Pat Shane, is... Uh, He's doing a pretty good job, I guess, for all that he's got to contend with here. Nelson Royal caught John Davis. Knee lift. They've got Davis going now. Nelson Royal does. There's the bulldogging maneuver. Very successful hole, a submission maneuver. Let's see if it does the trick. Yeah. Nelson Royal, a little help from his friends. The winners of this tag team match, the combination of Captain Ed George, Lewis Martinez, and Nelson action, Royal. Excitement. Super action. Thrills, my goodness yeah. gracious. And guess what? We're going right over to the Great action. Hall. Here we go with Crusher Verdu against Cowboy Frankie Lane. Crusher Verdu, of course, the man who claims to be the world's strongest wrestler. Against Cowboy Frankie Lane. Highly accomplished young wrestler from Calgary, Alberta. Lane comes out of the corner, lays a forearm in on the big Crusher, the big man from Madrid, Spain. Got him backpedaling. The Crusher's into the corner. Frankie Lane laying him in on Crusher for two. Grabs himself a front face lock, but the Crusher, using his weight advantage, has turned Frankie Lane around, and now he drives those knees repeatedly into the midsection. The Crusher tosses Frankie, for Frankie Lane right over. Now with the cowboy on the ropes, feels him. Frankie Lane lands halfway across the ring. Frankie Lane, a master of the high flying moves, but he's certainly not gotten a chance to. Uh, he's certainly not gotten a chance to display any of those high flying maneuvers thus far in this bout. The crusher whips the cowboy off the ropes. Frankie Lane over the top, but. Remains pretty much at his feet. Comes off with a beautiful drop kick on a crusher Verdu. And Verdu is bewildered and baffled. And Frankie Lane driving his head into the corner. Number of times. Frankie Lane going to town to the crusher now. Painting back for the early punishment he took in this bout. Referee ordering crusher Verdu to stand back to move out of the corner. Crusher arguing with the fans getting an opportunity to take just a little bit of time to get, regain his composure just a bit. He reaches into his trunks. People worried he might have a foreign object in there. It appears he does, as you can see there. Crusher Verdu went into his trunks, came out with something, dove it into the throat of Frankie Lane. Crusher Verdu. The man who claims to be the strongest in the world, amazing. He wouldn't need anything other than his strength and wrestling ability to prove himself. Crusher Verdu once again. Question of a move, questioned by the referee. And 
it's pressure for do now being checked by the referee. Frankie Lane though. Finally manages to regain his feet. Frankie Lane is now out of the ring onto the floor. Referee once again checking pressure. Purdue finds nothing. As long as the referee is preoccupied with pressure, Purdue, the count will not go in on Cowboy Frankie Lane on the floor. Now the count starts. The count begins on Cowboy Frankie Lane. He has till the count of 20 when he's on the floor, 10 on the apron to return to the ring. Referee hole turned into a side headlock by Cowboy Frankie Lane. Drives a fist right into the jaw of Crusher Verdue. Paying him back in his own way is Frankie Lane. Cowboy Frankie Lane taking a lot of punishment here from Crusher Verdue. Being checked once again by the referee. Cowboy Frankie Lane looked, has looked very good a couple of times in this bout, but he's not had much of an opportunity to show his tremendous wrestling ability against Crusher Verdue so far in this bout. Frankie Lane once again manages to get to his feet. Once again, I say it is amazing, questionable why a man who claims to be the strongest in the world wouldn't need anything other than his wrestling ability to prove himself in the ring. Of course, he's his own best friend. He'll tell you before anyone how great he is. Not only, I must add, is he uh, laying claim to be the strongest wrestler in the world, he also claims to be the greatest wrestler in the world. The greatest all wrapped up into one package with the strongest, says Crusher Verdue. Frankie Lane thrown off the ropes, caught a knee from Crusher Verdue. Once again off the ropes, over the top goes Cowboy Frankie Lane. He's being overwhelmed for the most part by Crusher Verdue. The count goes in, it takes a three count to win. Wait a minute. Oh, the oldest trick in the book. And Crusher Verdue fell for it, didn't he? Much to the happiness of everybody in this arena. Cowboy Frankie Lane grabs the crusher, hurls him, throws a drop kick into Crusher Verdue in the corner. And now there goes a Beal, Bealing that 287 pound wrestler going for the flying head scissors, takes him over. Now this is the Cowboy Frankie Lane we're all used to seeing. Uh oh. Crusher caught him out of position, threw him right on his back. Cowboy Frankie Lane landed hard on his. Caught off guard there by the crusher, who catches him now in that bear hug. This is a submission hold. Couldn't spell the end for Frankie Lane during this bout, but no. Verdue chose instead to just drive Frankie Lane into the corner. Pulls the man to his feet with the use of the hair. Once again grabs his bear hug. Going for that corner again. Back first. Frankie Lane collapses on the man. Verdue's in for the count. This could be it. Frankie Lane has been weakened considerably. Yes, unfortunate, unfortunate victory there for Crusher Verdue. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, seven minutes, 23 seconds, the winner of the fall of the match, Crusher Verdue. Dick the Bruiser enters the studio. Well, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came out here, Dick the Bruiser. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's evident that Dick the Bruiser is not going to enter the ring right at the moment. 
Let's watch what's going to happen. There's an argument going on between Dick the Bruiser and Big Ernie Ladd. An argument going on. Dick the Bruiser challenging Ernie Ladd. Look at that. Look at that. They threw in the phone shoulder blocks. Two ex-football players. Two ex-football players. Two ex-pro football players. Dick the Bruiser put in that shoulder block to Ernie Ladd. All right, he did it. He did it. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is from Reno, Nevada, 260 pounds, Dick the Bruiser. The bell has sounded, Dick the Bruiser against, watch, we've still got any lad out here though, lurking by ringside. Ernie Ladd came out second best in a little blocking contest. We've got Dick the Bruiser against... Uh, Dick the Bruiser says, Ernie Ladd, that's for you. He says, the Bruiser said, this is for you, Ladd. But Ernie Ladd is... He's gone now. Ernie Ladd has taken off. Dick the Bruiser just going to work on his opponent. Okay, Dick the Bruiser, the world's most dangerous wrestler. Boy, isn't it great to have him back. Especially to have him back against Ernie Lane. Well, is that gonna be something? Dick the Bruiser. He's gonna show you why he is known as the world's most dangerous wrestler from his tactics in the ring. Dick the Bruiser, his opponent, gee, I don't believe I mentioned his name yet, Gary Fargo, my apologies to him. Dick the Bruiser calling for Ernie Ladd to come back in. He's ready for Ladd right now. He won't come out, he won't come out. Bruiser's ready for Ernie Ladd. He wants him right now. He doesn't want to wait. Ladd throw or Fargo being thrown out of the ring by Dick the Bruiser. There he is. Oh, rough and ready himself, Dick the Bruiser. The roughest, toughest man in the sport today. The world's most dangerous wrestler. This is the man that the people believe in. And they believe in him because of what he stands for and because of what he's done and what he continues to do every time he gets into the ring. Things much like you're seeing him do today. Things like you saw him do at Ernie Ladd. He's the one who shuts all these big mouths from talking. Boy, I certainly wasn't going to argue with Ernie Ladd, but Dick the Bruiser isn't scared of him. The Bruiser's not scared of him. No way. Bruiser just throwing punch after punch into Gary Fargo. Bruiser stomping away. <laughs> Dick the Bruiser got himself a nerve grip on Gary Fargo. Pulls him back into the ring physically. Now Bruiser climbing to the top rope. <coughs> Dick the Bruiser climbing up to the top. Boy, I'll tell you, I don't know. Let's see, is he gonna be able to do it? Here he comes, foot first, right into the midsection. That's 260 pounds of Dick the Bruiser coming down across the midsection with Fargo, that's it. Oh, how many victories Dick the Bruiser has had in his oh so illustrious career, it's impossible to say. What a wrestler he is. Truly a man that people can't believe in, the man that people have believed in for a long, long time. And this guy just keeps getting better and better and better as time goes on. Wherever he goes, he's matched against the top, the toughest men that sport of professional wrestling has to offer. 
Yeah, time and time again, Dick the Bruiser comes out victorious. Dick the Bruiser, at the end of the match, you'll see that hand raised high in the air in victory. Fans, we hope you enjoyed this edition of Big Time Wrestling. Truly an international show, a great one from beginning to end. And I think we've seen some exciting stars today. You'll notice this man in back of me that you've been watching here, the Sheik, the wild man from Syria, the United States heavyweight champion, was on this program today, but through the magic of videotape only. You see, the Sheik has been barred from live appearances on Big Time Wrestling. Why? Because he is such a violent individual. I personally think that maybe he should be barred from arenas around the country too because whenever that man appears anything can happen and certainly we don't want something like what you saw with Sailor Art Thomas to happen on this television program so nonetheless the Sheik is barred from this television program until the commission decides of his fate. We saw today Dory Funk Jr. from uh, the Lone Star State of Texas. We did see that wild bout from Indianapolis with the Sheik and Sailor Art Thomas. We saw Ox Baker. We saw a great six-man tag team battle with uh, Nelson Royal. We saw Luis Martinez in that six-man tag, uh, six tag team battle. We saw Captain Ed George. We saw the magnificent Zulu. Gee, it's been a, a great show all the way. A lot of top stars. Dick the Bruiser, and the list goes on and on. But, you know, a little bit earlier, we didn't mention how you can raise those badly needed funds for your clubs, groups, charities, and organizations. And here in Michigan, of course, the guy to talk to is Mike Colonis. Down in Tennessee, for you fans, in uh, the Tennessee area who are receiving this edition of Big Time Wrestling, the man to contact there, of course, is the super promoter in that part of the country and has been for some time. I talk about super promoter Nick Goulas. That's the man to contact down in Tennessee. But right now, here's the man to talk to here in the Midwest. Let's bring him out here, right, Mr. Tom, Mike Colonis. Right. Mike, come on in here. You know, we talked about uh, uh, clubs, groups, charities, and organizations out there, and you can tell us why Big Time Wrestling uh, is so good to raise money. Well, at this time, I'm speaking to all members and secretaries of civic service or fraternal groups watching this program. As you know, Big Time Wrestling is the number one attraction in the world today. If your club or organization is interested in sponsoring a Big Time Wrestling card in your city or community, all you have to do is contact me, Mike Colonis, and I will be very happy to send you all the necessary information. You mean the stars we've seen on this program today, stars like Ox Baker, the Sheik, can you imagine that? Uh, uh, Luis Martinez, Captain Ed George, uh, Nelson Royal, uh, Dick the Bruiser, they, uh, they can They're have stars like that at all? They're all available for spot shows. And uh, our arrangement with sponsoring groups is a good way for any club or organization to raise money for its pet project. And bear in mind that if and when we should do business that worldwide sports will do everything in its power to make your project a smashing sellout success. Okay, let's talk also, just quickly, because we're running out of time, about uh, what you need a building of suitable size, the National Guard Armory High School Gymnasium is great, but it can be inside or outside, right? Fairs, carnivals, celebrations? Any, any proper, uh, uh, any proper uh, location is uh, more than adequate. Right, like a football field, like, a, uh, like a, at a fairgrounds in front of the grandstands. Uh, Big Time Wrestling has drawn terrific crowds, Mike, and I want to thank you for coming on this television program with us today. Thank you, And Bob. I want people to get to know you because you're a great guy and you can help clubs, groups, charities, wow. and organizations out there. L list just a few of them quickly. Well, we, we've made thousands. E El uh, there, there's the Elks Club, the Eagles groups like that? Lions, Kiwanis, JCs, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Fraternal Order Police. We can go on and on. We've made thousands of dollars for civic service and fraternal groups, and our arrangement is so simple, you'll be surprised how easy it is to raise money for your pet project. Thanks a lot, Mike Colonis. Fans, join us again next week for Big Time Wrestling, when we again will present the stars from all over this professional wrestling world of ours. Until next week, goodbye to all.